Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching a Jscape MFT server tutorial. In this post, you'll learn how to set up an HTTPS file transfer. We'll begin with a quick start where you'll use the default settings in order to get an HTTPS file transfer service up and running with just a few clicks. After that, we'll tackle some of the more advanced settings so you can choose your desired set of SSL or TLS cipher suites and server key. Your choice of cipher suites and keys will have an effect on the security of your HTTPS service and its compatibility with your user's web browsers. Here's an illustration of what we'd like to do. Let's now proceed with a quick start. The first step is to enable HTTPS on your host. Launch your Jscape MFT Server Manager and go to the Settings menu. Next, go to the Web module. In the Web tab, tick both the HTTP on host and HTTPS on host checkboxes. Why do we have to tick the HTTP on host checkbox too? Because if we leave that unchecked, end users who attempt to connect via HTTP, which is usually the default action of most browsers, will get an unable to connect error or something to that effect. Of course, since we want our users to connect to the secure HTTPS service and not the unencrypted HTTP service, we have to make sure they are redirected to the HTTPS service even if they initially attempt to connect via HTTP. To do that, scroll down to the connections panel and then tick the checkbox labeled redirect HTTP requests to HTTPS. The settings we made will allow end users to enter your server's host name or IP address as normal, usually via HTTP, and then redirect them to your HTTPS connection without them noticing. So for example, if a user enters either of the following into his browser, http colon double forward slash domain dot com, or simply domain dot com, in which case most browsers would automatically append http colon double forward slash to the beginning, Jscape MV server will automatically redirect the browser to your HTTPS service. Pretty nifty, huh? When you're done, go to the bottom right corner of that page and then click the Apply button. Note that if you just configure the server up to this point, your end users will be able to connect to it and see the login screen. They'll even be able to enter values into the fields, but that's about it. They won't be able to log into the server. And that's why you need to proceed to step 2. The second step is to activate the HTTPS service on your desired domain. Go to the Domains tab, select the domain where you want HTTPS to be activated, and then click the Edit button. Navigate to the Services module and then click the Add button. When the pop-up window appears, select HTTP s from the drop-down list and then click OK. In the next screen, tick both the HTTP and HTTPS checkboxes and then click the OK button. You should now see your newly added HTTP and HTTPS services in your list of services. At this point, you would now have an operational HTTPS file transfer service which you can try using in a test environment. However, be advised that it's by no means suitable for a production environment, especially one facing the wild, wild web. First of all, the server key employed by default is only the example underscore RSA key that came with your Jscape MFT server installation. You would want to replace that with something representative of your organization and, of course, more secure. Let me now show you where you can do that. Before we replace example underscore RSA, let me explain first what this key is for. This key is known as a server key. In the context of the key manager, the server key actually consists of three elements. A private key, a digital certificate, and a public key. Here's how these three elements come into play. When a user's web browser first connects to your server via HTTPS, your server will look up which server key was assigned for the service and then send the corresponding digital certificate and public key back to the browser. The digital certificate will serve as your server's credentials and will help the user's browser determine whether your HTTPS service can be trusted or not. In order for the browser to trust your server's digital certificate, the certificate should bear a certificate authority's digital signature. Without that signature, the browser would alert the user with something like this. The user can still disregard that warning and proceed to log into your server, 
but at least he would have already been notified of the risks. The public key and private key on the other hand will be used to secure certain pieces of data that are exchanged during what is known as the SSL handshake. The SSL handshake is a procedure at the start of an HTTPS file transfer session wherein a web browser and the HTTPS server agree which set of algorithms, collectively known as cipher suites, should be used during the session. An SSL handshake culminates with the creation of a session key. This is a symmetric key used for encrypting whatever files are uploaded and downloaded during the HTTPS file transfer session. We'll talk about where you can configure those algorithms later on in this video. In the meantime, let me walk you through the steps of preparing a server key. Go to the Keys menu. Navigate to the Server Keys tab and then click Generate and then Generate Key. Enter pertinent information including the key alias. This is the alias you wish to assign to the key. The key algorithm. This is the algorithm used in generating this key. The valid options are RSA and DSA. Key length. This is the key length of the key in bytes. The valid options are 1024 and 2048. Although longer key lengths naturally translate to stronger encryption, they can also be computationally demanding. Read the article, choose key lengths for encrypted file transfers for more details on this matter. You can find a link to that article in the description. Note also that for key lengths greater than 1024, you must install the unlimited jurisdiction policy files. We've also included a link for that in the description. Validity. This is the number of days this key will remain valid. Common name. This is the name you wish to assign to this key. This is typically the domain name this key will serve. For example, httpsserver.jscape.com. Organizational unit. This is the unit within your organization that this key will be used. For example, IT. Organization. This is just the name of your organization. Locality. This is usually the name of your city. State or province. This is your state or province. And country, this is your two-character country code. For example, US. Click OK when done. You should then see your newly created server key. In order for that server key's corresponding certificate to be trusted by your end users' browsers, you would have to submit a Certificate Signing Request or CSR for this particular server key to a certificate authority. This particular process is beyond the scope of this article, but you can find more details in our documentation for obtaining a trusted certificate. Click the link in the description. Once your private key has been signed by the CA, you may then import it. Read the documentation for importing third-party certificates for details. Pay particular attention to the note on that page, as some of the problems you may potentially encounter moving forward can simply be caused by that. After importing, go back to Settings and then Web. And then in the HTTPS panel, select the alias of the newly imported private key. When you're done, click the Apply button at the right corner of that page. Earlier, when we briefly touched on the process known as the SSL handshake, we mentioned the term cipher suites. Let me now explain what they're for. A cipher suite is typically composed of four algorithms. An algorithm for key exchanges, an algorithm for implementing authentication, an algorithm for establishing confidentiality, and an algorithm for establishing data integrity. Here's an example of a cipher suite. Here, ECDHE, which stands for Elliptic Curve Diffie-Hellman Ephemeral, is the algorithm for exchanging keys. ECDSA, which stands for Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm, is the algorithm for implementing authentication. AES underscore 128 is the symmetric encryption key algorithm and is used for establishing confidentiality. And finally, SHA-256 is the secure hashing algorithm used for establishing data integrity. Before any HTTPS file transfer can take place, your end user's web browser and your secure web server must first agree on a common set of algorithms. 
Basically, as soon as the browser first connects via what is known as a client hello, it immediately informs your server which cipher suites it supports. Your server will then check which among those cipher suites are enabled on its side and then choose the most secure one. So really, if you want maximum compatibility, that means you want to make sure your server can serve as many kinds and versions of web browsers as possible, then you simply need to enable all supported cipher suites on your server. On the other hand, if you want to achieve maximum security, then you'll have to restrict your HTTPS file transfers to only the most secure cipher suites. A discussion on which cipher suites are the most secure is beyond the scope of this video. To enable or disable SL or TLS cipher suites, once again go back into settings and then web and then click the SSL slash TLS ciphers button. You can then start selecting the SSL slash TLS cipher suites you want to enable for your HTTPS file transfers. As soon as you're done, click OK and then click apply. That's it. Now you know how to set up your own HTTPS file transfer service.